a very warm welcome to our viewers, even as we continue with our discussion today, which will be focused mainly on empowerment of youths uh, through education. And today we will have our two guests uh, with me, who are Mr. Francis Njuri and Mr. Kennedy Kinyanjui. Thank you. My name is Francis Njuri, uh, the director of the Africa and the uh, on School Radio Program. And uh, I mainly deal with uh, young people, mm -hmm. basically in school. We do most, uh, I call it practical mentorship education, whereby we teach young children in primary school to high school to follow their dreams. If you want to be a journalist, radio journalist, if you want to be in the radio drama, if you want to be in any sector of the radio industry, that is what we take you through for the entire semester. For South Africa, we deal with uh, teen mothers in the society. It's another crisis that we always face in the society whereby we have young parents in the building which they don't know how to take care of themselves and the children, so we try to at least empower them to see how they can uh, manage the parenthood and still empower themselves as parents. So I will say that basically that's what we do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kennedy. Thank you. My name is Ke Kennedy and I'm the director of Husbands Girls High School. We are located in Maimahio. Maimahio is in the Rift, uh, in the Rift Valley, uh, in the Naivasha location. We are a girls' school only, uh, and we take care of the girls, and we want to change the way we do our education, where not only just books, but also to equip the students with various skills, so as by the time they live in school, they are, they are well balanced. They are able to they are able to get jobs. If they're not able to get jobs, they're able to be entrepreneurs of themselves. And they're also employable because um, we also take care of the other side of um, to make sure that they're well behaved spiritually. So it's a holistic way of education, make, making sure that they're well balanced from, from their career to their spiritual to their physical, to make sure even the games, uh, to make sure like you can create like sports to be like uh, to actually make sure like sports is a professional game also okay. from everything. So to make sure it's a holistic uh, kid like who is in school. The kind of discussion we have in terms of education, you find that not many people in the age range uh, where you are dealing with youths, that mm. is teenagers, mm. who are not sure of what they want to do later mm. or are still feeling like they have a lot of time yeah, yeah. yeah. Mtu Bado, you haven't focused mm -hmm. on exactly what you want to do i would love to also know from you mm -hmm. you have invested in educating youths especially teenagers yes, yeah. and this is um, an age group which according to everyone is very <laughs> tough to deal with Yes. So I would like to know why invest in education? You mm. could have invested in, in anything Various. else. Mm. Yeah, so why education? There are so many areas that you can invest and make quick money, but uh, you still feel like the education is the only way, like you realize you want to develop other students. Uh, you, want to, you, want to change, you want to change a society. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, the way we are growing, you find uh, the gap is widening, the rich and the poor. And mainly, if you look at our motto, is a uh, knowledge is power. If you don't have education, it's so hard for you even to know even, say even if you are left for an inheritance, how would you manage? So you That's must be true. educated and you must have some knowledge in basic things and everything. And again, as I said, uh, we look at it this way, like we are so great oriented. So we really want to mold, how do we mold the society? Like we don't have to focus only on the grades, but Everybody is gifted in a special way, just like your fingers. Everybody have their own, have their own, their own like talents, special talent yes. and everything. And how do we start tapping on that? And how do you develop? Because everybody is special in his own way. And that does not mean simply because you don't make it in, say, like a uni, that you are not good in something. That's you, you could be good in sports. You could be good in a skill. You could be a good caterer. You could be a good... You could be a good designer in drawing or even photography mm -hmm. or even radio presenter or something. You could be good in something. You don't have to be only grades, grades, grades only. Uh, like about investment, there's also something like giving back to the society. Mm -hmm. You can invest in various things, but sometimes you feel like, okay, you excel on your own, 
but your neighbors are not doing well. What kind of society are you living in? You're also not safe yourself. So, so trying to give back to the society and helping the less vulnerable, that is what will going to make us even reduce the gap between the rich and the poor and everything. I've been in the system. Okay. Education, eight for four. Uh, likely I have from, I still work in the same system. I'm an assistant dean of student at management university. Wow. Okay. So uh, you are in education. Uh, yeah, <laughs> in the education sector. So the funny bit about it is the reason that's why I decided to invest mostly in education because uh, I realized we have two types of education. We have the real education and we have the schooling system. Okay. Africa, the majority of African countries do schooling system. Mm-hmm. whereby we make sure our children go to school, they go to the school, and then after school, they come again to the system of looking for employment. Mm-hmm. And that is what I call recycled knowledge. But education, if uh, <laughs> my whole thinking can serve me right, is learning a skill, learning something new that you can now develop to build you, to enrich you, to bring the real you in yourself. Okay. The, reason I, the reason I started talks on radio school program is simply because I saw the future generation that we will come on this earth and will come after me, my children and the children to, for my children, mm-hmm. is they are coming to a new world, not the world that I was living in. The world that is full of technology, the world that is full of internet, the world that you can reach somebody who is as far as to buy within a second. Mm-hmm. But our system of education does not, teach does not them. allow us. Does not even teach them how to use it. Okay. It does teach them how to use the old knowledge that my grandfather and my grandmother used. So I decided, why don't I bring this thing to school? Why don't I see to this kid? Because I have the knowledge in journalism. I've been a radio journalist. So you want to be a radio journalist. Yes. This is the machine. This is the console. So uh, this is how it works. So this is how you train your voice to be on the radio. This is how you research it. Now, this is your show. I want you to host a, a book show where okay. you discuss a particular book. And then tell me the feedback. I have this application that parents can now send their feedback. You can never call it direct and talk to your child as they discuss the book. So you see, I've already given that child a brand. I've built that child to be a radio journalist and be a brand in, in its own self. So the moment this child will come out of the system, it will be a self-employed person. Mm-hmm. That is one. Secondly, he is already a brand. So the moment you need to engage this kid, you'll be engaging somebody who is already branded and who is already know what he wants to do. Work. Mm-hmm. And that is what other countries are doing. But we <laughs> as Kenyans, we have just decided <laughs> like it's great, 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 great. But look at what we look at where we are right now. We have <laughs> we have as we are talking <laughs> with Steve there, we are discussing about the Tibet. Yes. And you're discussing about the engineers yeah. in this place. And you're mm-hmm. talking about even the railway system that was built here. Imagine the railway, this uh, SGR, as it started, was mm-hmm. being run by Chinese. Yes. Uh, the expressway right now is being run, it's by, being run by Chinese. Yes. Don't we have engineers, engineer students who are doing uh, road construction engineering? They are there. We have a, a railway institute here. They are there. But they have not been pushed to go learn. What is this? Thing that Chinese are doing different that we're not doing. In fact, we had a similar conversation regarding how going abroad to learn yes. is also something that we should invest in, not just our government, even uh, for parents, for uh, those who are running institutions like both of you, yes. or organizations that deal with educating the youth. And it came about in the conversation that not just going abroad so that you can, uh, yeah, no. so that you can uh, live there, but also learn from them. So I'd like to hear your opinion on this, yeah. Yeah, and what you think about it, and how it can also assist the same youths that you are dealing with. Huh. Well, we have the best policies in the country. But the challenge is we don't implement those policies. But we have the best policies in the country. Because if we look at uh, a country like Dubai and the history of Dubai, we should have done it here. But because of politics and everything, we decided to throw it to Dubai. Uh, look at the theory of why Kenya build Kenya. We, we are saying it, and it's very well. Every politician is talking about the build Kenya by Kenya. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but where do you buy our suits? Where do you buy our furniture? I'm we don't. Not. We don't promote these guys. We don't promote these guys, and uh, uh, we also don't believe in ourselves. We also don't believe in ourselves because we believe everything foreign is good. Yeah. Everything foreign is good because you'd have expected, uh, like on the super highway, all the guys in Nairobi University doing engineering. They should have been there doing the attachment, mm -hmm. but they don't do it. Can have the same things you find, like the entire uh, road. There's nowhere to stop. There's no drainage. Something so basic. So you wonder, what are you learning? There's so much theory, and there's no practical. So I think we need to go back to what are we training our children. We need to be more practical oriented. I think that is where we'll get. And then once you become more practical oriented, you become more independent. Okay. Such that even if I don't get a job, I can still work. And once I work, I'll develop myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. To add on the same thing. Yes, please. Uh, as I was listening to him, he's, uh, he, th there's a particular line that he has drawn mm -hmm. whereby let us move from theoretical to practical. To practical. Mm -hmm. You see, it's funny that uh, a lot of these parastatos people go for uh, what they call survey trips. It was, uh, the MCS in Nairobi went to it, Amsterdam, <laughs> even Japan, to go look at how the city is to come and implement yeah, to that. Benchmark, yeah. To benchmark here. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> we have not seen the progress. There is no progress. We just seen the still. We are just in the same position. The same thing. Mm -hmm. See, uh, the CBC curriculum that is yes. now being implemented in our school mm -hmm. is something that people went abroad, so how it works. And then they decided now to come and implement it. Yes. But funny enough, this CBC has been there. Has been there. In the people who are in schools from 90s, mm -hmm. who are doing CBC. Yeah, just a different other, system. <laughs> we, had, we had the other craft. Yes. Yeah. We had music. Mm -hmm. true. And we were doing all these practical <laughs> things. So it has just been refurbished the name. <laughs> called a CBC. I don't know which kind of uh, the devil came in between. Uh, 1999 to 2000 and coming onwards. That is when the 844 system now yes. implemented completely mm -hmm. and abolished the other programs. Because mm -hmm. the program, if you see the kind of people that uh, came from the previous program, they are different from the people who are 844 system. That's Because for them, they are mansion. They are people who are practically involved with everything. Mm -hmm. So our problem is not even the policy. Our problem is the system that we have. This system are refused to implement the suggestions. The system have refused to go by time. Because if you see, uh, let me remind you of the Jubilee Manifesto, mm -hmm. that every primary school will have a laptop. Yes. It was That's the brightest idea. <laughs> the latest model and everything. Yes. It was the smartest idea. Mm -hmm. But look at its implementation. How many schools can stand and say, we have laptops? Right now. Right now. <laughs> um, you see, the, 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 the digital literacy is something that I guess each and every school should do. Because uh, as I was talking to Steve, he says that where the school is, the Hot Spring School, if you send even a message to a parent, mm -hmm. it's even becoming an issue to comprehend a simple message. A message? Yeah. I'm sure. Kindly <laughs> just know that you are closing on this date, come pick your child. It has to be, somebody has to come to school to be explained. What does the message <laughs> mean? <laughs> really, the digital literacy mm -hmm. is one factor that every 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 person has to get answered. Because we are changing. If uh, Corona came in and taught a lot of us a viable issue, that if you don't change the time, time will change you. Will change. And if you, that time does not change you, it will kill you. How many schools have closed because of corona? So many. So many. Very many. Where did these children go to? At home. At home. Mm -hmm. and that is why we have the burden of single parents in the building, mm -hmm. teen parents in the building. Mm -hmm. Simply because we did not adjust to the times. Because our problem now, as you were saying, people going abroad and learning and not staying there and coming back is, funny enough, people have gone abroad. They have learned a lot there. They have come back. But the environment is not conducive okay. for you to implement. Okay. Funny enough, Samsung wanted to build their headquarters in Kenya. Yeah, yes. Here in Kenya. 
But the environment, do you know what I They want to build it in Ethiopia. Half the price they were to build it in Kenya. Now, how will you grow if the environment does not even allow you Yeah, if the investors are living. Uh, funny enough, uh, I started a company, a yogurt company. Do you know to get fully fledged company <laughs> in Kenya, it is more expensive for you as a resident than a foreigner. Than for foreigner. That is something that I, I got shocked because you have the license, the permit, the what, what, what. It's almost 100,000, and you haven't even started producing them. And you're not even legit yet. You still have to go hunger that people. <laughs> Why are we talking? Why are we talking of bribes? <laughs> it is exactly how the system is. Ah. Do you know even to get your child into a good school, you have to bribe the headmaster? <laughs> in fact, now that you've mentioned that, does it happen in our school hot springs? No. Uh, yeah. For us, it's a private school, so so there's nothing like you have to bribe to come to school. Mm -hmm. You come, you you only need to believe in whatever we are doing and whatever you are teaching. Okay. Uh, so you don't need to have any favors or anything like to connect with uh, say with anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, fine. It is an open school whereby. We enroll everybody from the entire country. Okay. So so there's no favors or you know anybody. It's a very open school. Naju I don't know it's a girls' school, <laughs> There's nothing like Naju Amtuku Puja. Yeah, finally. Okay, for like it's an open policy. Yeah. You okay. come to school, you have the good grades. Even if you don't have the good grades, you can still see what you can do to make sure you you're ready to learn. So we are going to take a short break, yeah. courtesy of Fortech Global Solutions, who, even as we speak, their Black Friday sale, which is for all of their gadgets and all of their services, you will get a 5% discount. So for all our viewers, please uh, get into their site, look at what they are offering, that is, they are offering laptops, they are offering phones, and even as we go for a break, we hope to see you back. So don't leave. This month, enjoy crazy deals on phones, laptops, antivirus, and so much more. Save on that gadget you've been dreaming of. Visit our store at store.forteglobalsolutions.com and grab the deals of the month. Welcome back to a live show where we are speaking about investing in education. And we have had a lovely conversation thus far with our two guests, Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Francis. And even as we continue with the show, I hope you have checked the Fortec Global Solutions page and continue following them and finding out what they are doing. One thing I've, met, uh, I've noticed about with both of your uh, institutions, mm. if I would call it that, is that you deal with girls, the girl child. And you have also mentioned of teen mothers. Uh, yeah. And when we're talking about teen mo mothers, then it also means uh, the teenager uh, age bracket. So, why girls? Because you, you invested, you have invested in organizations that still do it. So, why girls? I'll be honest with you. <laughs> if there are people you can change a society with, it's women. Wow. It's girls. You see, uh, why do I say so? It's simply because if I started a boy, if I do boys, yes, mm -hmm. but the support I get for ladies yes. is much different for the support I get for boys. And when you say support, do you mean financing, financing a sponsorship? Acceptance, <laughs> all those. You see, when I go and present myself and I say, today I have, I have a program for boy child that I want to transform the boy child. Mm -hmm. There's the mentality that is drawn already mm -hmm. that you. Why do you want to support people who are strong? Oh. That is the mentality that is there. Okay. You see, at even big institutions that we go asking for funds or support, they'll ask you, who are you dealing with? Who, is, who are you dealing with? In that categorically, they want to understand, not to understand that you're dealing with youth or what. Mm -hmm. They want to understand between the boy or and the girl, girl, who are you dealing with? Mm -hmm. We say a boy, they'll say we'll call you. Oh like, no! Wait. The heaven will rain. The sun will come out. Who is there to wait to be you, called? You, you, you waiting. But say, girl, girl. So girls, which, which is, people become interested. Mm -hmm. 
So to, for me, I decided I won't do much of this into the society. Let me go to the grassroots. The grassroots is the school where I will have the boy and the girl That's to true. give them an equal opportunity. The reason that's why I deal with the uh, teen mothers in the society is simply because already this is something that everyone talks about, but they don't do anything about it. You see, <laughs> it's funny how we found these stories. The media will say that uh, Kisumu is the leading in terms of teen mothers. Okay. We shut out. Nairobi, the increase in teen mothers has increased. We shut out. Mm -hmm. But there's nobody who's coming forward and say, what do we do about these children who are already teen mothers? Okay. Because one, some of these teen mothers don't have breast feeding milk. They yeah. depend on the nun. Mm -hmm. And nun, if anyone is a parent, I think goes 1,000 plus. And if it is a boy or a girl, they consume those teen <laughs> two in two weeks. <sighs> and so you that, have no employment. And you have no employment. <laughs> and then, furthermore, you're living in a ghetto where your parent depends on a casual work. So it ends up again, this girl has to hook herself to feed the mother and to feed the child. Mm -hmm. So to cover this crisis, that is why we are coming in. That's why we are stepping in. So for girls, it's a bit to get. It's easier to get funds. It's easier to get support. It's easier <laughs> to, to get everything. You become done. biased. No? <laughs> I'm not becoming biased. I'm just saying whatever it is the truth. What, what, like honestly, even ask any man when you start to even even ask him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he will tell us. He will tell us. The problem you go about boys, mm. it's on another level. Okay. And that is the crisis that we have in this country. <laughs> People believe that men have to fight their way through. And that is when you call for support as a man. People will criticize you. People will <laughs> put you all the way. Honey, you will be killed before even you start the process of asking. <laughs> very unfortunate. That's a very yeah. unfortunate story about it. Yeah. Yeah. Girls are... Girls, anyway, okay, most of them are actually vulnerable. Majority of the girls that we deal with are very vulnerable because if you look where we are situated in Maimahio, yes, the catchment area is Narok. Mm -hmm. Narok is Maasai area. And the other main catchment area is Naivasha. So if you look at the Narok, especially the Narok aspect, uh, the Maasai girls, they actually have one of the biggest challenges because... Uh, their culture, they are not so much inclined in educating girls. Yeah, so there's so, GM, so, early marriages. So the early marriage is, is an aspect. Especially during COVID, I think we, we got how many? I mean, we got about 20 girls who got pregnant or maybe married off. Because if they don't have school fees and the mother has to beg for the father to pay school fees, because you see the mother is a housewife yeah. and the dad is the one who decides whether I'll pay school fees for that girl or not. And he meets his friend in a local in a local place, then or something, and he tells him, but they have a girl who is of age, because a girl who is in Form 1, she's 14 years old. Yes. So, 14 or 15. Physical features have started growing. Mm -hmm. So the father starts seeing, I can sell off and get some extra cows. <laughs> get. So, so what do you do? Do you let that child go, especially when they don't have school fees? It becomes a very tricky situation because we need the resources That's to keep true. the child in school. Yeah. Again, if you send her home, you feel guilty that that child went and went one way. <laughs> so, there's no return. There's no return. There's no coming back. So, it's a very delicate balance for us. The other, the other, so, you're like, you find these parents from Masai land, they don't care about books. So, the kid will come without books. So, now what do you do? You have to go down deep into your pocket or look for Probably. guys to sponsor mm -hmm. to even pay for them. You have to subsidize even their school fees. Their books you have to provide. Those guys even pocket money they don't have. So even sanitary towels, there's a time we used to be provided sanitary towels by Nairobi Rotaract Club. And they used to come and give the girls. And then plus also mentorship. You really have to do a lot to change our society. Because they're your neighbors, so what do you do? Yeah, you, so the girls, you really have to assist. The other batch is also the never shop. And most of them, they work in the flower farms. They are, they are, their folks work in the flower farms. So when COVID hit last year, they don't have income. So what happens to these girls? You're in a single room, in a small area. So it really becomes a whole mess and everything. So the girl child is really at a corner. Uh, they, they're trying to say that the girls have been empowered. 
but there's still a long way to go. There's still a long way to go. Very long. Yeah, way. very long. And way to see, go. It's, it's it's amazing to know that even though there is a long way to go, mm -hmm. both of you are investing yeah. in them, and um, I believe in something that is touch one life mm -hmm. or uh, one individual at a time, yeah. and that is already making impact okay. rather than. Folding your hands yeah, folding and your saying, hands yeah, yeah, I can't do much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so right. even apart from just dealing with girls, um, enrollment, because you have, both of you are facing challenges where if it's a teen mother, they can decide, you know what, let me take care of my kids. Uh, I don't need to be educated or I don't need to study right now until probably this child is at a certain age and you're also dealing um, with parents who are not willing to take their children to school mm -hmm. because they have other plans in store for them. So how do you face, how do you um, deal with enrollment and also motivating them enough mm -hmm. to see that this is something that they need? Yeah, for, for enrollment is a challenge for us because uh, the generation you're dealing with, because uh, most of the parents who are having kids in Form 1, they are the age of 35. And uh, some of them are even single mothers already. So they're wondering, I never went to school, so, and I have made it in my own kiosk, so where does she have to go? And then there's also that competition between your daughter and the mother. They are, the daughter feels they are, they are of age. I mean, they are, they are of age and they don't need to be told anything by the mother. Okay. So, and this baby girl has also seen the mother do, do maybe, she was not in a straight business also. So she's been seeing it all. So she's like, by the way, and then we also have a society, look at the politicians that are there, uh, the likes of the guys who are doing well. They never went to school, and they're so proud about it, Kina Sonko and Kina, the rest of the guys. Mm -hmm. so, so the girls feel, why do we have to go to school? Yeah, why? Why, why do we have to go to school? Look at even the places where we work. Guys look at it like, by this one, so we never went to school, and she has been promoted. So there's actually that challenge of like, who are the guys who mentor these people. Who do we look up to? The guys who are up there are actually a bad example. But either, by and large, we still have to do whatever we have to do. We still have to, uh, like, mentor the children. We have to look for people from different fields to come and talk to them and try and tell them there's an the aspect of hard work. You will never going to replace the hard work. And from there, you're going to excel. And that is why we also bring in now the skill, uh, okay, for like the skill center thing whereby we have to train this child. You may not make it in school, but you can make it in clean business. Yeah, so that's okay. it. But the enrollment is still a challenge, but we cannot give up, as you say. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Enrollment. <laughs> <laughs> she is like, it's, it's, it's like uh, I'll say, it's more of like a credit. Okay. You have a choice to load as low as 20 bubble. You have a choice to load as more as 100, according to how you wish Yes. Enrollment to any program is not by me forcing you to. It's the will. Because mm -hmm. you see, for me, it's more of a will. Are you willing to change? Are you willing to be shown? Are you willing to learn? Or are you willing to better your life? You see, that is what I put across. So long as you're willing to be taught something new, you're willing to change your ways and see a better way to make things different, then we can now start the journey of progression. For the schools, this is where I get a challenge, and it, uh, I'm very, I'm very glad that he's here. <laughs> you see, the schools uh, are yes. very funny. How so? In this perspective, my program, the school radio program, yes, it is an amazing program for children to grow with. Yes. But you find you go to a school, you tell them, uh, I have a program called Talks on Radio School Radio Program. This is what we do. So. The first question they ask is, how will the children balance between school, school and, this program. and this program? So you are like, is in this school too? Yeah. Because whatever you want the child to balance on, I appreciate that. And I've called it an after school program. Mm -hmm. I've given you eight hours of the day to implement knowledge to this year. Give me two hours. To implement soft skills, practical mentorship, someone to learn at least. The moment you get out of this school, mm -hmm. you can go out, continue with that show, 
if you if the sh if you indeed uh, you don't want to be employed in our program, you can decide to go and to do something else. Basically, that's what it is. Do you find that school is like? Um, mm, we'll think about it. We'll see how to do it. So I, I once told the principal, you see, my program today may not make sense to you, mm -hmm. but I'm giving you another one here. <laughs> <laughs> My program will now make a lot of sense the moment now the CBC will hit your head properly. Why? CBC is practical. Mm. It's about instilling soft skills to these students. And that is, all, I, guess, I guess that is what we lack in this country. You see, for him, he went to the system of, uh, the, the, let me call it the old yeah. regime CBC. <laughs> and then from, the, from there, he went yes. to NYS. Okay. <laughs> so, and NYS was compulsory. Yeah, when one who cleared school, it was this route, and then you go to college. Right. When you were working at NYS, one of those soft skills. Yes. You know to do, come on, go interested in electric and all, and all, and all. You that. do that. Corruption came at the whole that. It disappeared. So it is from high school, fresh as you are, whoosh, yeah. campus. Mm -hmm. And that is why you find somebody comes in campus, he does not know where to start, where to end. Is he just peer pressure in a kutupa become, in a kutupa become, in a kuleta, in a kuleta commerce, in a kutupa, in a kuleta BDS, in a kutupa uku, in a kutupa uku, in a kutupa science, in a kutupa uku, and then you sit relaxed. Social, uh, social, influencer, social media, social yeah. media influencer. Yes. Unona uko ishiki. <laughs> Unenda YouTube. Unenda Nothing. YouTube. Una kuto kuna four thousand watch and one thousand subscribers. Akuna. And then uh, what do you become? Sitting at home, doing nothing. Exactly. Simply because lack of one thing called soft skill. And that is exactly now the problem that we have. Talks on radio is about instilling soft skills that you can become independent as you learn. You see, there's something that I guess, this I call it the poverty mentality. Mm -hmm. My son, my daughter, go to school, learn, get employed, mm -hmm. and then build a family. But in Africa, that's not practical. Mm -hmm. You don't read, get employed. Yes. You read, and then you start looking for employment, that the employ which the employment that is not there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, before you get even that stabilization to get into it, it is another struggle. It's another school of life. But the moment you teach our children to stand, to know that entrepreneurship here is part of life, mm -hmm. then we are building another different society. And I love how our offspring is doing it. They have a soft skill program whereby they need to, they know that apart from you getting that A, that B, that C, in this world you need these soft skills. Mm -hmm. You need to know how to speak for yourself. You can present yourself in front of people. And I would love anyone here, just go to any class of these people that are reading here and just tell people, I have 5,000 shillings. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will sponsor you to do that. I have 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to stand there and present for me an idea I can invest in. And if you get one, I'll leave my number call me. <laughs> I will gladly do it. And since we are at Triana University, so we are up for the challenge. Kabisa, to talk to after your idea. Very funny individuals. People who cannot even express themselves. Yes, we are in an institution that's yeah, a university. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit unfortunate that you find that uh, the programs that will help our young people to grow, these programs they are not even looked at. People don't, people see, they look at the money more than the effect and the impact this thing is bringing to these kids. Okay. Because there's no investment bigger than education. Because uh, I guess that is what eradicates poverty as we go on forward looking at what it is. So when you get people educated in land, no, you see, in Kenya it's very funny. You can be arrested for nothing. <laughs> simply because you don't know you don't know, right. right. you don't know what the law says. Right. So you'll just be arrested and the next option is Officer Nikolatao Kwa Situonge story. But you've just been arrested for nothing. There's the procedure of being there's a producer of arrest. Land I mean you see <laughs> that kind of if you can imagine now if a, a, a whole grown up who has a degree <laughs> Is arrested for nothing and accepted. Mm. What of this person who did not even vote? 
they don't fare well, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I guess now the schools has to adapt to one thing, mm -hmm. that children right now, where we are, the 21st century, is no longer about the, the standard of B star, D star, is all. It's not among grades now. It's about having a grade that is top up with a soft skill. Mm -hmm. And you will survive. Because, okay. honestly speaking, if you are doing journalism in these schools, you have a class of 40, or let's say 60 people, doing the same course. What would make you different from an employer who is sitting outside there waiting for such graduates? It is not how you look. It is not your grade. It is your idea. Is it investable? Can someone just look at you and say, yes, that is an idea that I can invest in? Mm. For me, somebody challenged me in the field of journalism. He asked me one day, Francis, if today you're laid off and then we meet and I want and uh, I have 20 million to invest in you, what will I invest in? You pause for a minute. <laughs> that is the moment I was like, Papa, I'm going to marry the green. I'm going to for a minute. So that is when I looked back and I said, True, I have nothing you can invest in. Let me go for it. Right now, ask me that question. I will, give it, I will even give you the bank account for that company. <laughs> You're set. Yeah, I'm set. You're ready. Yeah. Okay, and that yeah. is wonderful. Because yeah. you're also inspiring somebody who would have thought, as we've kept on being told, that you study, get your degree, find employment. And as we have realized along the way that it does not work that way. If it was another country, maybe worse. Okay, country, okay yeah, another one. Yeah, it would be like, yo, how... You have educated that. You have a degree. It was. Yes, we are good. Literally, right now, no. when you go to presenting your papers somewhere, the first question is, what do you know? Nani ame kutuma apa? That's most unfortunate. Why are you most here? Most unfortunate. Mm. Nani ame kutuma apa? Mm. Ah, you don't have that. Oh, you don't have that. Thank you. Mm. Later, papers are Kuna two shelves. Utaona trays. Zina kwa Yes. Inaeko wapu tu. Ilikoni. Hmm. <laughs> and then and the, the fortunate thing is, not that your trait is good, you have to go to the paper Hello, I'm going to go to the house, college, and I'm going to go to the house. Ah, there's a position. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go so it's a sad story. It's very really unfortunate how the system is that we have to go to school, read, get a degree, and then wait for somebody to retire so as to get that position. Because mm -hmm. that is what we are doing. Literally, like right now, when anyone who is graduating is just holding on their papers every day on their knees, oh God, I pray, somebody to retire so as I get a degree. The sad truth. And that's how, uh, now, the, if you want to look at how unfortunate this is to be, look at how um, politicians are going to do it. They are going to gather a lot of young people, promise them a lot of jobs the moment they're being elected. Mm -hmm. And then, when you, they're elected, they disappear. And that's what the system is. That's true. It promises you a lot of opportunities outside there, mm -hmm. when you finish. Remember the word finish. finish. When you finish, there's a lot of opportunities. <laughs> Not when you're there. Not when you're there. Mm -hmm. But if, I love the whole spring <laughs> where they say is, school is where you make mistakes. It's where you learn step one, step two, when it is mixed, it's not working, yeah. you can try step, step two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now school system is, finish school, there's opportunity outside there. Mm -hmm. The opportunity that is outside there, is looking for a job. He's waiting for somebody to retire to be employed. Though we want to encourage young guys also, in as yes. much as it is hard looking for jobs, eh, uh, we cannot also. We also have to encourage them to to actually study. There's no there's no shortcut to it. Gain as much knowledge as you get. Uh, gain as much skills as you can. 
not just knowledge only, you do as much as skills as you can. And even if you finish school or when you're in your break time, I mean, when you're in a semester break or when you're in a summer break or something, you try and volunteer. You cannot just stick at home hoping that somebody will know what you do. Yeah. You have to volunteer, even if it's in a local school, even to teach, even nursery or kindergarten, or even in church. Volunteer, get out of your house. Cool. Nobody will ever know you when you're at home. So you have to get out of your place. Go out, go out let people know you. Let people see you. You may not be paid even so well. You might even get that job. But again, you'll also be frustrated. Because yeah. you'll be like, how come I'm working so hard? And, and nobody, nobody is noticing yeah, that I should actually be promoted. Yeah. But somebody, someone notices what you're doing. So you have to encourage the young guys. They also have to be patient. They have to be very persistent. Like I'll tell you even the, like the history of our school. We, you actually sometimes even have to plan even your future. What do you want to do the next two years, three years, five years, ten years? For us even to start a school in Mamahio, you're like, where do you get... We looked at the requirements for a school, and you require like five acres. Where do you get five acres? We come from Kiambu. Where do you get five acres in Kiambu? You can get, but the kind of money, how much is also yeah, a problem. Yeah, how much is five acres But in that is a requirement for you to get a license for a high school. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? We are going to my Why? Land is cheap. So you see, at least we had to start by buying land. Okay. And then trying to change the environment, because it was almost a semi-arid area start planting trees, start doing what, just to change the entire environment. Mm -hmm. From there now you're like, okay, I'm at step two now. Now step three, let me start construction. Pole, 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 pole. But the whole story is, eh, today you might go and see the school and might really admire, like, yeah, these guys have really Done made it. Well. But where have they come from? How long has it taken them to be where they are? That is a challenge with the youths that we have today. They want to be where you are right now but they don't know the journey and the steps that you have taken to be there. When we started, I will tell you the story. When we started, we started in, in uh, 2009. Okay. Now, the story of 2009, our first clans were the IDPs, because from the Rift Valley, when they had like, uh, like the clashes, they were all dumped in Naivasha. So from there, it was easy. So what okay. happens with most of the parents? They came and dumped them in our school. Why? Dumped. Yes, they uh, literally dumped them there. Reason being, it was a safe haven for them. Okay. So as they can go look for the other kids. So at least you already know this one is here. So at least I'm safe. So let me go look for the rest and see where I can get my property and see where I can start my life. Because mm -hmm. at least they know you, yours, mine is somewhere there and she's safe. Those are our first plans. What do you do with those kids? You can't send them home. They don't have uniform, you have to provide uniform, you have mm -hmm. to provide it for their food, and you're in business. So that's how we started. <laughs> it was a, like, instead of, like, you starting from an even point, eh? you started from a negative <laughs> point of it. You're like, what, what, what brought me here? No, that exactly. is the first question. You're yeah. like, what really brought me here? Yeah. What did I even, what, what was I, I thinking? Think what did I even think of this thing? <laughs> but, but today I look at those parents and say, those parents were wise. Today if, you look for, today, if you go look for a job, you don't tell them I'm an orphan, I'm CG, what happened in clashes in 207. Nobody cares. What they ask you for? Show me your papers. Mm -hmm. So I look at those parents, they're like, these parents are bright. They knew years to come, people will forget about elections. Look at the guys who are fighting. They're all in the same parties, they're all the same, same politicians, and life has moved on. Continues, yeah. What are we trying to say is that we have to be patient also. We have to work hard, but the youths have also have to be very, very, very patient. Like, success will not come tomorrow. Like, the way we try and read the fairy tales, like, oh, I'll go and invest, wash, wash money, nothing. There's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. There's that journey that you have to take. But patience and hard work have to go hand in hand. We may look at guys like Bill Gates and think they were lucky or they were what. But if you listen to that guy, he's also a workaholic. And as much as you might say he was lucky, but there's also hard work that he also puts in his work. So basically, we have to study. We have to put a lot of effort in our study. And we also have to postpone our short-term gratification. So uh, do, you go, do you go for happy today or do you read for your exams tomorrow? So those are the choices you have to make. What do I do? Do I, have my, like, do I try to postpone my gratification or what do I do? So the guys have to work hard for them to see the success tomorrow. Okay. Yeah.
That's very interesting. Yeah. Having and appreciating that journey yeah. where you just don't see of right now yeah. and you think of what will happen later, where mm. will I be? That one question <laughs> no one likes being asked. Where do you want to be in five years? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Even, even you listen to him, he says that uh, this is not a dream that started in 2009. No. It it's took something time. that took time. It was processed back mm. in the years. He's somebody who has passion for making something out of it. Because, Pia Mimi, I won't lie. Talks on Radio 28 is right now. Yes. It is started back in campus. I started, uh, mine was Sauti and Manufunzi. Okay. I, mean, I just sat down in class and were like, Apana. <laughs> There's something I wrong. don't like what I hear. Yeah, I don't like the way these things are being run. Yeah. You're, you're learning, John, you see, there are practical less. there are practical units, there are practical like courses that require somebody to be very hands on. Mm. You see, journalism is about creativity, it's a creative world. It's not about that uh, I have to go to class seats, listen theories of uh, journalism, mm. and then you go from theory of journalism, you come to learn the history of mass communication. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> principles, you see, things like management. You have to learn the principles of yeah. management. You have to learn what is management, the principle that you, is there, the format of formatting a, a memorandum of understanding. All those, there are those type of units. I don't discard education in a, at all. The only thing I'm saying is, as much as you're learning, as much as you're going to school, as much as you're reading, here, be researchful. Be somebody who can research about the world. Because I'll tell you, so we have projection for the 20, uh, 20 to 50 years in times, which kind of things will be relevant and which kind of things will make business. You see, uh, something funny about how some of people, the employ you see, at the moment you're telling, I want to be somebody, this kind of person in the future, can you go research about it in the 20 years to come? Because China, I guess right now, some of the classes and schools, they're not being taught by humans. They're taught by robots. Mm -hmm. Some of their airports and even the market is not a human who is serving you, it's a robot. Mm -hmm. And he's doing more provision job than a human. Mm -hmm. You see, so some of these careers are going to be obsolete in the future that you person who is saying, in my future, I'm going to be so and so. So kindly research. As much as we are putting our head down to these books. Mm -hmm. Remember, not everything in this book is out there. And not everything that is outside there is in these books. Mm -hmm. So kindly learn what the world is, is literally looking for. And then put yourself on those books. As much the, that world requires you have to have a grid, mm -hmm. it requires you to understand what it needs. And that is where now we break the balance. Between somebody with a good paper. I mean, <laughs> we're discussing here about one thing, about a person with a perfect grid. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is at Ukutolea Karatasi EV, it is first have class. No philosophy, <laughs> first class owner, <laughs> upper division. Yes. What you could you could end a case, sir? Your first class on an upper division in a core, <laughs> the reverse. Work in terms of performance, in terms of work, it is now second class or a lower division. Mm -hmm. So you find that the productivity at the end of the day is another issue. Because yes, we are learning, but which kind of product are we giving out? As mm -hmm. a certificate graduates, because there's somebody who called them the, the learned fools. Yes. Yes, you are learned. But, but we are not seeing where the seeing education where is. Yeah. The education is not there. So as much as youths want to be somebody, because my story is a bit, I'm a youth, I'm a, I'm a young father, I'm a, I'm a young person, and I understand the dynamics of starting your own company. It is not easy as it looks. I started talks on the South Yemen of Fuzi, and then in the ways I thought about it, this name won't make sense. Yeah. You're not a student anymore. So you, how do you speak for people that you're not? So I changed it to Voltage Radio and then things happened. People you are with in the school, you, they are visionary. The same way you are here. They are visionary. Yeah. They see that this thing will work. But everything needs sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Everything needs us to put our heads together and to at least sacrifice a bit of our pleasure and all that so as to achieve something. Voltage went and died simply because some people felt that they are putting more effort than others. Mm -hmm. And I said, This is my baby. 
I will carry it as long as I'm going, I'll go with it. 2019, that is when somebody asked me that question. Francis, if I wanted to invest in you, what would I invest? What would I invest in? <laughs> and I remembered my baby. That is the baby now, I transform it to what it is right now. And that person invested. And that person <laughs> now look at me and say, Francis, indeed, that question was the right question. And I told him, you saved my life from there. Mm -hmm. But the process of now started. That journey of now transforming that, knowing that you need to register this thing to the bar, to, to, through the city, you register the name, you get that permit, you go to the bank, you get it, uh, the account, you go to Safaricom, you mm -hmm. get everything done, and then now come and get uh, young people who know to create the website, the mm -hmm. app. It's an investment. But okay. now the young people, the problem with them, they want fast money. <laughs> They don't, want, they don't want the process of getting money, they want the fast money. So somebody asked me, like, Francis, so talk sound in Akulipa Pasangabi. I was like, it, <laughs> it is my life and it feeds me and my family. So you can now look at how much it pays me. If that's the first question somebody asked me, I'll be like, okay, nice, it's nice talking to you and it's a bit Thank you. Thank you. Simply because I know the process. I need somebody who will come here and Francis, I've analyzed your talks on radio, and there's something I would love you to listen for my end. Yes. This is an idea I have. Mm. I'll give you an opportunity. Run with it. I'll give you the support that you need. So long as you put the effort that you show the first time. You see, That's the problem true. with you is another one. Yeah. I come today to your office, I need a job. <laughs> I give you the opportunity, mm. I get relaxed. That's it. You sit uh, back. Is it bad? Ah, you go nakar. Nalipo mshe amoyes. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so, like, yeah. youth need to know that everything is a process, okay. and in that process, there's sacrifice. So, and then find people who are like-minded like you. Somebody who wants to fight poverty as much as you want to. That's true. And don't go with peer pressure. It doesn't pay. I always tell people peer pressure is like a job with no. Final destination. Because uh, you will be working hard, so, so hard, to wear the same shoe somebody is wearing, the same suit somebody is wearing. <laughs> yeah, nothing, but no at the talk. end of the day, you don't know how people get their suits. Yeah, you don't know how they're it wearing their shoes. just COVID that came to show us that some of these people you, saw, you see in TVs, they hire clothes. And then after the show, they take it, they wash it, they return it. You will die before even your time comes. Yeah. So just take your step by step and simply, I will live to say, believe in yourself. Okay. Just believe in yourself. Because if anyone, I talk to you, if you're not believing in yourself, then who will believe in you? No. You have mentioned something about peer pressure and how we look at other people and want what they have, but we have not discovered what we can do in yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And I want to move this conversation into the angle of the school, the, the ASON that is happening in schools, that yeah. has been happening for the past month. Yeah. You deal um, with girls, both of you, and hot springs. <laughs> <laughs> I have not Thank seen you. you. I mean, hope, <laughs> yeah, so there have been reports that it's because CBC has become the, the new the curriculum has become tougher. Mm. Well, they're catching up with uh, how COVID okay. had affected schools. For others, it's lack of communication. So, what do you think is affecting them to the extent where students have decided? You know what? We don't, want to do, we don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and how are you dealing with that from yeah, yeah. your own end? Mm. Uh, mainly it's a sad state of affair of whatever is happening. Because it shows what kind of society we are. <clears throat> like it's a broken society. Uh, as you have mentioned about the peer pressure, that is there. We see the neighboring schools are straight, we also strike. So we also follow suit and everything. And then there's also that breakdown of communication they feel like uh, the management is too up there, we are not able to communicate with them. So there's not that clear channel of communicating. We've tried as much as we can to try and engage the students almost on a very, very close, neatly way, whereby we even cluster, because we have very few students, like less than 200, 
and we have a workforce of about 15. So we're able to cluster the students into 10, 12. So as you may not talk to me, but you can talk to this other group. And we make sure like their families whereby they can be able to communicate and express themselves. We also encourage the students, kindly express yourself. If you feel you're really dissatisfied, eh? there's something, there's a teacher who is really hard on you, or maybe there's something that is going on in school that you really feel you don't like, kindly learn to express yourself. You don't have to take a stone and, or take a much more sunburn. It's a very sad state of affair, but we really have to keep talking to these uh, guys and everything. And we really hope nothing really happens because uh, there's also another level of indiscipline. Okay, no matter what you try to justify that, you know, like, like you did not eat chapati today, today you are served with rice that you want to burn a school because of that. Even in your home, you don't eat chapati every day. Uh, we try and really try to make sure that they learn to express themselves without taking any stone or anything to actually burn or destroy the school. You can communicate and communicate effectively. Uh, the other challenges, like about indiscipline, I think it's also coming also from our homes. We don't have time for our kids. We are very busy with our, we are very busy trying to chase a shilling. Mm -hmm. So we have left the kids with who? The house helps and everything. So we don't even know what your child does. You don't even know who are the friends of your children. So, because you see, sometimes it's always nice to invite your children's friends to come home. So as you get to know who are these friends and everything, because you'll actually see birds of a feather. They all flock together. Yeah. So, so you're like, it's always nice to invite these guys to come over to your place to get to see who are these people my son always hangs out, who are these kids, my, my, my kids. And also, if possible, also visit them also to try and see what kind of families do they have. Because there's some places you go and say, no, I wouldn't like my child to go to, to a particular place. Mm -hmm. So, so that in discipline also, though even the parents also, you try and communicate to the parent and tell them, by the way, your child have noted something. And you find some of them, they come gun blazing. You're like, no, you're, you're pointing at my child. Why, why should you? I mean, they don't even want to hear anything you talking about your child. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. like, my child is good. Sometimes we had an incident whereby some kids had, uh, uh, had makeup, had hair, funny hair stuff. When you call the parent, She's worse than the child. So you're like, who do you know? Why do, why do, you, why do you start addressing? But basically, at the end of the day, we still have to keep communicating to the students to try and see if there's anything else that we can do to improve. We can never be perfect. Because even if you leave school today, you go to the job market. Again, you will not find everything that you like in that employment. Even if you start your own, like your own business, you won't have everything. You won't have all the clients that you like. You'll have some good clients, you'll have some people who, who, no matter what you do, however much you service them, they're never satisfied, but you still have to service them. You get? So it's a whole thing like, how do, you, how do you teach your children? Like, you have to adjust. You're here, it's not your home. You are with other people. You have to be accommodative, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to learn to live with other people also. That's true. But in a harmonious way. We all, we all have to live with each other and uh, to make sure. But discipline is key. There is nothing, because if you're not in discipline, you don't even have the moral authority to, uh, to even talk to other kids also. If you're in discipline also, you won't even wake up in the morning to read. There must be a teacher in class to make sure you're reading. Mm -hmm. There must be a teacher nearby to make sure you've slept. There must be a teacher to make sure you've lined up for food. So discipline is everything. And that also has to come from home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even as we progress with this conversation, I'd like to ask um, both of our guests, now that you have seen the challenges um, that you face in uh, working or investing in education, what would you recommend that either the government or the parents, even other people who can become shareholders, to tap into that you think is a niche that hasn't really been focused on or hasn't been looked at? Oh, okay. So for me, the niche that hasn't been looked for, <coughs> and doesn't know most of, most of us have ignored it, and we call it more of not what it is, talent. Talent is the most crucial part of education. Because every kid 
is special. Every kid has a special ability. So the moment we don't tap on the same thing, we left them hanging in an area of unknown, not, not knowing who they are. And that is why you find most of the kids coming to campus, they don't know what to do. And that they end up being depressed because they have tried this and that and that and that is not working. So I recommend most of the schools, parents and even teachers and even institutions, as much as we give, we feed education into books, let us try as much as hard to level up with the talent. Because talent is that ability that gives this child a special feeling of even knowing something new each and every day. Our system of education, I, I, would, I would love to say clearly that we have to change. We like it or we don't like it, we have to change to CBC. Because uh, it is the, new, is the new norm that COVID has bring and is the new norm that the world is adapting to. We need to get involved of what our children is learning. We need to get involved of what the world is offering. And the other third thing I need every school to involve themselves is, is research. Research and a benchmark. If you take what you're teaching and take what UK is teaching, can they match? Can they be on the same level? And to the youth, I'll leave this to you again. Kindly, believe in that dream that you have. Because the dream is what will drive you. Waking up is not easy. Every day is not easy. If you don't have that drive and the passion to make sure that whatever you have been planning and dreaming about is coming to reality. And then the other thing is uh, plan to express who you are. Learn to express and learn to network. Because the other thing that I've come to realize, and it's very crucial, is networking. Nowadays it's not about how many friends you have. It's how many people can support the dream you have. The network that you have tells how your future is. Because the, if your network is about Pombe, <laughs> if your network is about Pombe, trust to me, your future will be full of Pombe. If your network is about business, you won't lack, trust me, you will go to business and you will do business. So, let one, let me go to institution. Institution, let us invest in talent, invest in research. Those are the two crucial things. When you invest in these two, we cannot go wrong. On youth, learn to invest in yourself, learn to network, and learn to believe in what you do. Because if you don't do, who else will believe in what you do? And never, never in life surround yourself with the, with the surrounding of the compound of the school. Because it is four years period. After four years, you are in your own. Your, your ID is expired, so you are no longer recognized as a student. <laughs> you are now using Uduma number. <laughs> so kindly, that is the only thing I can say. As much as we are looking forward to invest in education and everything, those are the four crucial areas I would like to say. Anyway, to, uh, if I told you to talk to the government, huh? they usually have the IFMIS for the public schools and they sponsor the public schools kids a lot. But when the kids come to the private schools, they really don't support. Yet, we are there to supplement the government. Because the government cannot build all the schools everywhere. They have tried it and they have failed. So, for that aspect, the government should actually also bring some subsidies. Need to last with the teacher, find out what is there. Is there any big challenge between because you cannot disconnect yourself? Because at the end of the day, we parents are very are very busy, but during the prayer day for the final exam, eh, we all we all flock the school. But you've never gone to school from form one, apart from the day you reported to that school. Eh? <laughs> yes, that's a day, that's a day you go for prayers and you go with all your relatives for the prayer day. What will you be praying for? You've been absent for the four years. Four years. Please go, go to school. See, see what the child is learning. Because you see, with that you're able to work with the child and see what is my child good at. 
and you're able to guide. Unfortunately, you realize even the parents, they do also not know what wow. their, their, their kids want to know. So they are not able to guide the children. So there's also an aspect of like, how do you train the parents also to understand how do you choose a career for your child? And not you forcing the child, this is a career you need to take. I missed being a doctor, so I want my son or my daughter to be a doctor because nearly miss you by a few marks. So, and most of the kids, even in university, you ask them, they tell you, I was told by my parents to go and study journalism. You get? So, but if you work with your kid, eh, you're able to start knowing what is the strength of my child. Slowly, slowly, you'll be able to understand your child because your child is your child here. Because uh, you see, the teacher will come generally, teach as a career, or maybe. If it is not a calling, it's a career. Yeah. They'll come and teach and go. But the child is yours. So it is you who will carry that burden if that child does not make it where you want your child to make it. So it's you as a parent. You really, not just paying school fees. School fees is just one bit. That's just your responsibility. There, there's nothing about. But in fact, you shouldn't even stand up and tell us that you pay school fees. That's your responsibility. You get. But working with your child to really guide your child, and that is not the role of the parent of like, how do, I, uh, how do I plan the path for my child? What do I want my child to be? And that is not the leadership that you'll have to take as a parent. So you, you cannot really be absent because you pay school fees or, and stay at home and come for prayer day. The other thing about the youth and the investment you've also mentioned, I think I can also encourage them. It's not a bad business. It's tough. It's not easy. Sometimes, like us, we invested by construction and the... Uh, and we had to pull in resources from all of our banks and, uh, and back to the family. If you're, not able to do, if you're not able to go that line, there's also another line the youths can also take. You can also go rent a premises and start a school. That can even be much cheaper for you because it's not your building. You only need to pay rent. So the day you'll ever feel it's not working, you can walk out. But you know, imagine if you've done the construction, you cannot be able to wind it up and everything. And you know, yeah. for construction, it's a very heavy investment. Like real estate, I mean, it's okay. It's like real estate, so it's a long-term investment. Mm -hmm. So you're not wind, you're not ready to wind up anytime soon. It's something you you have to go almost 20 years. But for renting, it, it it's an easier way for the youth to even start. Start by renting, you'll be able to pull as many students as you can. When we were starting, we also had both challenges. Yes, you're constructing, and then you get very many students. You don't know where to pack them. So you're also, you're also advertising. You want, you don't want. You want some students, you don't want some students. Because if I get so many, where do I put them? So that is where the challenges that we had initially when we started. But uh, now I would only encourage the young guys, just go and rent. It is easy. From there, you pick it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even with this conversation that we have had, we... Ah, we've had so much. <laughs> and you see, the, the more you learn, um, the more knowledge you acquire, then the more prepared you are for whatever is waiting for you outside. And you see, this is what we do on this show, on the talk show. We are here to have conversations that not only uh, build you in terms of business, entrepreneurship, but also build you in terms of leadership, whereby you are able to understand what the market that you are getting into needs. And during this show, we have had a lovely conversation. And this will be the end of our episode today. And we would like to thank all our viewers for joining us. And kindly, um, make sure that you like, comment, share. And you also keep going on us uh, for every episode, follow our conversations. And even for our YouTube, um, our YouTube uh, page where we will post this content, kindly follow us there and ensure that you also learn from us and learn from these good conversations that we are having. So I would like to thank those who have helped this show, uh, bring you this show today, that is Forte Global Solutions. Um, apart from that, I would also like to thank the team that has been behind this show. I'd like to thank our director, Buju, and also our director, too, who is Bahati, for being able to bring you this show through camera and uh, sound, and also for our producer, who was Steve Korir, 
and also courtesy of our social media manager, who was Brian Kavalaji. And apart from that, we'd like to thank Riara University for enabling us so that we can shoot this show today. Apart from that, I'd like to thank you for joining us and stay with us. Thank you and have a lovely afternoon. This month, enjoy crazy deals on phones, laptops, antivirus, and so much more. Save on that gadget you've been dreaming of. Visit our store at store.forteglobalsolutions.com and grab the deals of the month.